Howdy, guys, and welcome to night 42 of Big Brother Season 23 Overnight Feed Recaps. And this is Cliff Notes from outside the Big Brother house. All right, Tuesday night, we actually had a lot of conversation and activity as compared to your typical Tuesday night. So how do you summarize it all? Well, not so hard when so much of it really didn't have a whole lot of impact in the game itself. But we are going to talk about the important conversations that took place. Before we do that, let's talk a little bit, just a real quick refresher. Brittany was renominated uh, after the veto ceremony and is on the block against Derek F. Uh, now, Brittany is the target. It, it looks like she's, she's likely going home, but there is a bit of a movement to maybe save her and send Derek F. home instead. We'll talk about that and the conversations involving that that, that occurred last night. Uh, so before we start that, let's talk about Derek X's haircut. Yeah, Derek X got a haircut. Tiffany gave it to him uh, yesterday. I will leave it to all of y'all to decide whether you like it or not. Uh, I will say just an inside scoop is I'm sure y'all all know we don't have barbers that come into that place. If you want your hair cut, you have to hope that someone else in the house is a decent hairstylist. I know during my season, I had three or four people, Jessica, Bella, Tommy, all cut my hair. I, I did it myself one time. I think I did the best job of all. But uh, Tiffany gives Derek X a haircut. Now, here's the thing. Tiffany still does a good job of playing the social game with everyone else, whether she's a barber or not, she's spending time talking to Derek X. And I think that's a valuable thing to, to be doing. The one takeaway from, from the haircut, other than, than the final result itself, but the one takeaway that I thought was very interesting, Derek X, while she's cutting his hair, mentions that he thinks he's going to have enough money to be able to buy the, the coup de ta power, the week three power. I think it costs $250. I believe it involves basically you becoming the new HOH, uh, taking over from whoever the actual HOH is. Uh, so he thinks he's got enough money to buy that, which is fine and dandy. But don't tell other people that. They had Derek X, when he tells Tiffany that, uh, he runs a real risk that she's going to see him as a major threat because of it. And his time could be short, cut short before he gets a chance to spend the money. So I think that was a mistake on his part. But he is feeling confident that he's going to continue to get a lot of money from America's votes and, and maybe be able to to have that power uh, once week three comes along of the high roller competitions. All right, this took place in the afternoon, but it's worth talking about right now because so much of the rest of the evening's conversations revolve around it. Brittany had a conversation with Kylan, not just any conversation, a very long conversation and even a long conversation by Kylan's standards. Them trying to work out what was said, what was agreed upon uh, before Brittany was put on the block. A lot of the discussion revolved around this, this supposed deal that had been made or, or not made. Uh, remember, Brittany was saying right after the nom renom ceremony that he had broken his deal with her and she was incredibly upset. Uh, the argument, once they start talking and Kylan's argument or response to Brittany was, I never made that deal. It was, it was just a possibility. It was a, a what if of me saying, if I keep you safe, then you will give me three weeks of safety. Well, I didn't keep you safe, so there's no deal to begin with, Brittany. Yeah, whatever. It seems like kind of uh, tiptoeing around the uh, what may have been understood the, the agreement could be. Uh, he is telling Brittany that, that she needs to, now not needs, he's saying, Brittany, you have to tell everyone that I did not lie to you that you misunderstood what I said. You need to be saying that, Brittany. And she's saying, I don't necessarily want to say that. I'm going to be campaigning for myself. I'm not trying to defend you right now. And he said, no, yeah, you have to say that, Brittany. You're affecting my game if you don't. Well, he put her on the block. So I, if I was Brittany, I wouldn't worry too much uh, about his game right now. Uh, Kylan, again, is very insistent that she tell everyone that he did not lie. Uh, and he's also saying, and do not use me as part of your campaign pitch. Do not try to drag me or anything else. If, if you're going to do that, you better come and tell me first. Otherwise, uh, it's not going to be good for you. Oh, all right. Uh, he, he, again, he just put her on the block. So, and he doesn't have a vote on Thursday either. So Brittany doesn't actually owe him a whole lot of anything. But he's very insistent that, that he needs to control or has a say on, on how she conducts her campaign throughout the week. Uh, Call, Kylan is also telling Brittany that one of the reasons he put her up was because of the belief that she won $100. She's saying that that shouldn't be part of the decision. Well, I, I actually think that that is a consideration. And that's why you don't tell people how much you, you won or, or did not win. Uh, but he's saying, yeah, that's one of the reasons that you were nominated. Brittany is later 
uh, recounting that conversation to uh, Tiffany and Aza. She told a lot of people about the conversation throughout the evening. She's complaining that Kylan was demanding answers uh, to his question. Uh, He told her that he was tired of getting I don't know answers from her, that he wants actual answers and not just I don't knows. Uh, And so she's upset with that. Tiffany and Aza are both upset with the way he's been handling these these tactics, these questionings. Oh, we'll call it his interrogations. Uh, and they're telling Brittany, hey, don't let him manipulate you. Just you're a strong woman. Stand up and say, no, I'm, I'm not going to do it. Uh, later, Aza looks up to the cameras and, and she says, look, if it wasn't for the, the bigger goal, and I'm paraphrasing a little bit there, but she says, if it wasn't for the mission that we all came in here for, uh, I'd put Kylan on the block. I'd send him home immediately. I don't think Kylan realizes how much he has alienated so many people in the house this week with the way he has treated these HOH one-on-ones. Yes, the uh, the Cookout Alliance will protect him, at least for now. Uh, so he doesn't face any immediate threats, I don't think. Uh, but he's really done a lot of damage to his game because he's just let the HOH power go to his head a little bit. He's not the first house guest that's done that, but he he has not done himself any favors this week. Uh, Sarah Beth is talking to Alyssa and Xavier, and, and she is worried about next week. She said, look, People consider, she said, I just realized that people consider Xavier and I a duo. Really? You just figured that out? Now, she, uh, uh, she's saying because people consider Xavier and myself a duo, I, I'm really uh, a little bit worried about uh, you know, being targeted next to him, uh, depending on who gets the power. And I think that's a valid concern. I think uh, Sarah Beth easily could find herself on the block next week as a pawn or as a target, either one. All right, uh, Tiffany and Hannah are talking. They're both agreeing that Kylan needs to be the first one gone from the cookout. Oh, the damage he has caused. Uh, saying, yeah, we, we got to get rid of this guy. They're also thinking that one of them needs to win that final six F, uh, HOH so they can make sure that a cookout guy goes home first. It's going to be interesting. If we get the final six, are all cookout alliance members, I do think at that point it's going to fall, uh, fall into uh, gender lines. The cookout men going against the cookout women and yeah, that first final six HOH could determine a lot in terms of who ends up in those final two chairs. Tiffany is worried that she's going to be the first cookout member to go out the door, uh, that Aza and Derek F obviously uh, don't like her uh, that much. And so she, she's worried that she could easily be a target once they get just to cook out. And, and she's right. Uh, Tiffany and Hannah are disagreeing about whether Claire or Derek X need to go to jury first. Both of them are trying to protect their own partner, saying the other one probably ought to go home first. They finally reached a little bit of agreement, said, well, let's just hope it's a double eviction. We'll send both of them out the door on the same night, and we'll both be happy. uh, We'll see. Double eviction should be coming up here another couple of weeks. So uh, we're starting to hear more conversations about just how that will go. All right, we've got Alyssa and Xavier talking. Alyssa thinks that, that Claire and Zaza uh, she says, Claire and Aza are in talking to Tiffany right now. And I think they're probably talking about potentially saving Brittany. And that's exactly what they're doing. Uh, Alyssa has that part figured out. Uh, and she's afraid that if that is the case, if the house does flip, Brittany is saved, that she and Xavier are going to be on the wrong side of the vote. And what does that do to their game? But Xavier's saying, look, I, yeah, they may be talking about it, but I really don't think the vote's going to flip. Because he knows about the cookout. He knows that Derek F. has some protection that Alyssa does not know uh, about. And, and he's probably right. Uh, the house guests are having dinner. Uh, now, biggest, biggest issue. I forget Kylan and what damage he's done to his game and everything. The biggest issue I have last night with everything that's happening. They had dinner. They had spaghetti. Now, nah, spaghetti that's, it looked pretty good. But they had spaghetti on a Tuesday night. It's Tuesday not, night, not Taco Tuesday Really? Uh, you got to break the tradition, guys. Yeah, I, yes, I noticed it as, as soon as I saw the spaghetti being served. They didn't have tacos on Taco Tuesday. but I, All right, uh, be, be the, the trendsetters that you are, guys. All right, uh, we've got a long evening. Uh, well, let me talk about this first. Kylan is, is meeting with Claire and, and then later with Derek X. Kylan loves his meetings. Uh, they're both saying that they don't really care who goes home this week. They're somewhat ambivalent about it. Doesn't really matter to either one. Claire says, eh, neither one really helps my game, so eh, I don't care. Uh, but they've both talked in private about potentially trying to save Brittany. But to Kylan, they're saying, yeah, eh, we don't really care. Eventually, Derek X does say he's leaning a little bit towards saving Brittany. He says, yeah, maybe 60-40, I'm leaning towards keeping Brittany. 
He says, it's just out of fear that, that once she's gone, I'm going to be the one on the target. I'm going to be the bigger target for Xavier and Alyssa that Brittany's a little bit of a shield for me, Derek, uh, Kylan. And, and that's why maybe I would I'd go ahead and keep her a little bit longer, but Kylan's just the opposite. Kylan says, look, uh, if, if we keep Brittany, she's coming after me. So I need to get her out the door because it protects my game. If, if that's the case, uh, we have a long evening of the house guests playing games like mafia, uh, doing their big blue couch, little show and all of that which means nap time for me. Uh, yeah. Not that I don't enjoy all of that. It's just not gameplay. And, and, and so it's easy to, to kind of take a break uh, when those things happen, happen. All right, we've got Brittany and Xavier talking. Uh, Brittany, again, uh, is upset at the way that Kylan talks to her and, and all of his questioning slash interrogating that goes on. She tells Xavier, she says, look, he's treating her like, like I'm stupid, like I can be played. Oh, don't worry, Brittany. He talks to everyone the, the same way. Uh, Xavier comes back, says, you're a grown-ass woman. Don't let them talk to you like that. Stand up whether you go or you stay. Do your campaign. Do what you need to do to save yourself, and you walk out with your head held high. And I agree with Xavier uh, completely on that. Xavier's a stand-up guy. All right, we got Tiffany and Hannah talking. Tiffany is worried that with Brittany gone, uh, the two of them could end up as the new pawns if, if they don't win HOH. Uh, we're getting to the point where, where we're going to continue to see maybe a, a, a cookout alliance and, and their partner put up as, as a pawn and an actual target. <coughs> but they don't want to be pawns either. We know what happens to pawns, right? So they're both worried that, that Brittany, if she is gone, uh, someone else has to be, go up instead. And uh, they think it easy, easily could be Tiffany and Hannah. Tiffany is talking, uh, she's again targeting Sarah Beth, saying, look, the reality of it is, Hannah, you and I are the only ones that are willing to put Sarah Beth on the block, that we're the only ones willing to send her home. We need to just go ahead and do it and be done with it before she stays in this game longer than, than she needs to stay. Uh, Tiffany is saying that, that she's, Tiffany says, I'm going to tell Xavier that he can only be HOH if he agrees to put up Sarah Beth uh, as, as his tar- target nomination. Why do these house guests continue to think that HOH winners should be a, a group decision, a consensus decision, uh, instead of just who played the HOH competition the best? So much conversation this season about throwing HOHs to a s- certain person, about, you know, you can only do this if you agree to, to work with the group and all that. Now, Tiffany, I understand you may want to try to influence him to put up Sarah Beth, but whoever wins gets to be HOH. You don't have a say in that necessarily. Y'all can tell I got a little bit of a bug in my cron some things to, today, right? Tonight. All right, we've got Brittany telling Aza that Kylan is demanding a list of who she would target by tomorrow night. He has said, you have to have a list. I don't want, I don't know. By tomorrow night, you've got to give me a list of who you would target if you stayed in this house. Aza's telling her, say, I refuse. Just tell him you're not going to give him that information. Uh, does Kylan not understand that Brittany whether she goes out this week or not, Brittany is going to be on the jury and that jury management is an important part of the game. If he comes down too hard on her, does he really think that he may get her vote uh, kind of come final two if he's in that final two chair? It makes me really interested to watch some of the goodbye messages that we're going to, I assume, start seeing this week now that we're in the jury phase. I want to see who handles jury management well who is very cocky and, and arrogant perhaps and not handling it so well with, with regards to goodbye messages. messages. That'll be interesting to watch. Now, there was an interesting thought from Brittany during her conversation with Ozzy that I hadn't thought of, and I think it's, it's a brilliant consideration on her part. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about what's the next HOH comp, uh, competition. They got it right last week with the wall comp, but this week or, or two weeks ago, but this week, uh, there, Brittany's thinking the next HOH comp could be the slip and slide competition. It's about time for it. And she's saying, look, it makes perfect sense that if they've got slip and slide, the big bowl could be to win HOH, but there could be a smaller bowl you have to fill up. And if you do, maybe you win more HOH bucks to help your position within the high roller competition. I think that's a brilliant thought. I, I agree with her. I think that, that, that makes a lot of sense. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited to see what the HOH competition may be. All right, we've got Claire finally talking to the cameras. Uh, I always appreciate when she gives her uh, gives us her insight at the end of the evening. She's saying that, that she wants, wants to work on her relationship with Kylan. She doesn't think it's where it needs to be. But it's tough since she knows that he is a liar and that he's only playing his own game, that he's not going to think twice about 
whoever he's playing the game with, it's, it's all about him. Uh, she's saying at one point, she's saying, look, he keeps saying he's happy to throw up Sarah Beth uh, if he needs to, to send her out the door. Uh, and we know that he's probably doing that to try to distance himself in order to protect his standing within the cookout alliance and all that. But Claire's saying, if he's willing to cut Sarah Beth so quickly, why should any of us think that he wouldn't cut us as well uh, at the drop of a dime? So I can't trust him to play any game but his own. But with all that being said, I need to talk to him. I need to work on a relationship with him. But she said, I don't know why Derek X trust him so much. Apparently during Mafia, she says, even during Mafia, uh, Derek X refused to believe that Kyland was, was lying to, uh, to him. They got to be careful playing these games like Mafia that involves deception and lying and all that. Someone who's good at Mafia probably is playing big brother pretty well also right you know there's nothing you do in this house that people aren't paying attention to uh she's also saying that she thinks that kyland is either going to be gone in the next two weeks or he's going to be in a fantastic position uh, to make it to the very end well he's probably not gone in the next two weeks because he's got the protection of the cookout alliance so he he may be in a good spot but again we're hearing some rumblings and some some talk that maybe He's the first to go once uh, once they get to the final six. Uh, so we got that. And finally, she's uh, she's thinking that she's in a good spot, uh, but she also thinks that people are noticing that. I think she is in a good spot. I think uh, she's not in the cookout alliance, but of all the non-cookout alliance people who are left, Claire very well could be the person that somehow breaks in a little bit to the very end, especially, think of this. Tiffany said that she is afraid that she may be the first uh, person to go once they get to the final six and cook out alliance members. So Tiffany's worried about her position in the game. Claire is her, her top duo, uh, her, her side piece. So, so to speak, when you get to maybe a final seven and Claire is there uh, still, and, and along with the cook out alliance, would it not make sense at that point that Tiffany maybe, especially because they're also worried about the gender split guys going against women and vice versa. Would it not make sense for Tiffany to try to hold on to Claire and maybe convince Hannah uh, as well that, that, hey, maybe let's keep, uh, keep Claire right now and send out one of the guys. We'll still have five Cookout Alliance members and, and all that. So Claire may have a chance to break into that final six and actually survive a, a little bit longer than one or two of the Cookout Alliance members. And once that happens and people start going after each other, I think all bets are off. So, yeah. so I agree with Claire. I think she's in a decent position right now but that doesn't mean it's a safe position whatsoever. And then finally, she's talking about Xavier. She's saying, look, I, I think Xavier's in a good spot because he's kind of laid low. And she said, Kylan has done so much this week to upset the Jokers. As long as there's any Jokers left in this house, uh, which uh, Aza and Derek F, she said, as long as there's Jokers left in the house, they're going to be going after Kylan, not Xavier. And, and so as a result, I think Xavier's in a pretty good position. And I agree with Claire's position or uh, opinion on that as well. I think she's got some pretty good insights into the house right now. And with that being said, all the house guests start heading off to bed. I think they're all in bed by three or four o'clock in the morning calling in tonight. And so I'm going to call it a day as well. Guys, uh, it'll be interesting. One last night of campaigning. Brittany's going to, I don't think it's going to matter. Here, here's the deal. If you look at it, uh, Hannah and Derek X, Claire and Tiffany, a, a, two, a foursome who have talked about the possibility uh, flipping and, and keeping Brittany in the house. Now, every time it's been brought up, uh, Tiffany and, and Hannah have kind of said, well, yeah, yeah, but there's reasons that we would want Brittany gone. So I think they're going to keep that from happening. But theoretically, that group of four plus a vote from Mazza would be enough to keep Brittany in the house and send Derek X out the door. The reality is I don't think it's going to happen. I think at the end of the day, the cookout's going to, to watch out for each other and it'll be Brittany out the door. Uh, and it'll probably be a seven to one vote. But Brittany's going to continue campaigning until the very last minute. So props to you for not giving up, my friend. Uh, don't think it'll matter, but I still admire the good fight. So there you have it, guys. We'll see what campaigning takes place overnight. Uh, tomorrow's eviction day, and uh, we'll see what happens then. Y'all have a fantastic Wednesday, guys. Uh, I'll talk to y'all tomorrow. Until then, SKD 143. Cheers. <laughs>